it is my distinct pleasure to introduce a lot of you to somebody who has uh, been a great addition to the University of Kentucky in the human resources work life often. Anne is a licensed clinical social worker and she does offer free mental health counseling to all of our employees, retirees, and their spouses through Work Life Connection. And she also has on our website the ability to schedule appointments online so that your calendar can match up with her calendar so you don't have to worry about calling and you know waiting for her to call you back to get appointments and stuff. But I, I do have a quick caveat before I introduce Anne to speak. Is she's been with us for a long time and people love her. We love her very much. She's an awesome speaker. And I thought to myself, I just got back very fortunate to have gone to Paris, France for a lovely vacation. And we went to the Eiffel Tower. And part of that history, they teach you that it took them two years to build the Eiffel Tower. But while they were building it, they had plans to tear it right back down. It was for the 1890 World's Fair. And they had plans to build it, enjoy the World's Fair. And then they were just going to tear it down. Now, let's face it. Can you imagine Paris landscape today if they had teared it down? Well, that's how we feel about Anne Bassoni. You can't have... HR without her. So I hope you all give a big round of applause and welcome Anne. I was wondering where he was going with that. <laughs> Build it up, tear it down, I don't know. <laughs> Does this work? Oh. Whoa. All right. So there's this adjustment period. Okay. Um, hello. It's been a pretty good conference, hasn't it? Excellent. You all ready to retire tomorrow? Too bad, huh? <laughs> okay. Well, um, it's interesting uh, because evidently uh, there is a lot of emphasis on the emotional and psychological part of retirement because uh, you heard our previous speaker, and I'm going to touch on some of what she said and add some additional thoughts to that. Um, as a licensed cl clinical social worker, I see people uh, often uh, come to talk to me about retiring, and uh, they have a lot of questions. Uh, oftentimes, they're pretty scared. Uh, you know, it's an exciting thought, but it, it also makes us a little nervous. So um, we are going to talk about um, how to start doing some planning now for some of the issues that you might be concerned about uh, when you do retire. And like Ward said, as a UK employee and also as a retiree, you are eligible for five free uh, visits uh, through our program. Those visits are confidential. They don't go in your medical record. They don't go in your personnel file. Uh, and besides myself, there is Rhonda Henry. Uh, you can schedule appointments with both of us online, and we'd love to see you. Those five visits are per fiscal year, so every July you get five visits. Uh, and we see people for a variety of reasons besides retirement issues. We see people for work issues as well as personal issues. Um, the only thing, and we also see uh, your sponsored dependents. The only thing we don't do is couples counseling. I like to say I tried that. Those couples are divorced, so <sighs> we will give you a referral, though. Um, that is not our specialty. <laughs> um, so anyway, okay, so uh, today's retirement. Uh, people are living a little bit longer. Uh, they have a few more options now, but still the main issues that people are facing are some of these listed above. Uh, they're worried about social relationships, as Dr. Henderson said, uh, caregiving responsibilities, where am I going to live, who am I going to live with, um, you know, the, the part about what is my role, what is my uh, function uh, after. Um, I think a big fear is loss of independence. Uh, people are often scared about that. Um, and managing time, living on fixed incomes. So we're going to talk about uh, some of these uh, in, in, in a little more depth. Um, I don't want this thing to be too sensitive. Okay, so a lot of the literature says that you should start planning your retirement two to five years before you retire. Um, and that's, uh, you know, uh, so that you can start thinking about the different areas. Um, I don't have the nautical terms like Dr. Henderson, uh, but I'm going to talk to you about uh, body, mind, and spirit so that we can uh, uh, talk about those and, and help you all find some ideas. But it's interesting because I was at a conference earlier in, uh, this week in Minneapolis where it is cold, yes, um, and, but 
Have any of you been to Minneapolis? Did you take your picture with Mary Tyler Moore's statue? No? Oh, you should have. It's great. Because if, if a policeman is around, he'll make you sing the song, which makes it a little more fun. But anyway, um, so with retirement, there's not really a guideline. There's no uh, straight up, this is how you do it. There's, there's not a performance evaluation with it. There is not a job requirement. It's, it's what you make of it. Uh, so um, you need to know, the, I think you know some of the things you're giving up. You know that structure that Dr. Henderson talked about. Uh, some relationships sometimes that happen in the office um, and part of our identity. But when I was at that conference, we were talking about retirement, and one of the ladies said um, that one of the questions she asked her clients is um, not so much what you're going to do in retirement, but um, what are some of your concerns and your fears about retirement, which I thought was a great approach. It's different. So, if, and, and she broke us up into age groups. So we had the youngsters, we had the middle-agers, woo, and then we had the, the people nearing retirement. So if I ask some of you, like, what are your concerns about retirement? What are your fears? You know, not, I, I'm going to go to the beach, I'm going to drink tequila. What are some of your fears? Well, maybe drinking tequila is a fear. But what are some of your fears about retirement? Just holler it out. Money. Money is across the board for everybody, yes. What else? Health, yes. Again, more so for the middle and, and olders. Elders, excuse me. What else? What? Disability. Whether you'll get it or not, if you can. Yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. Anything else? Being insured? Yes, insurance. Hold on a minute. Is that better? Is that better? Sorry, you guys. I usually just talk really loud. Um, right, so are we going to have insurance? Uh, and will it cover what we need it to cover? Um, and these are, are some of the things that, that came up. Money definitely across the board. Uh, health to go with that, you know. Will I be able to do the things we want? And that's where we started talking, and which I think is, is really interesting because uh, some of us uh, might have money, uh, and, but we might not have the health to do the things we want to do. And I think about my mom. My mom has post-polio syndrome, and she was a teacher, and she's been retired for some years, and she can't move anymore. She can't really get on planes and travel and, and do these things. And every summer, we used to, I was uh, born and raised in California, we'd drive to Tennessee to see her family, and I think it was maybe last year, year before last, she said that she was uh, really disappointed because she said, you know, I wish that we hadn't spent every summer in Tennessee. I wish we'd gone to the Grand Canyon. I wish we had gone here. I wish we had done this. Because she can't do it now. Even though financially, she is well off. And that pisses my dad off after the divorce. But she is well off. <laughs> so, but she can't travel. So, one of the things we t that I think when we think about our fears is, you know, along with this bucket list is, um, you know, you hear all the time the stories about people who retire and they drop dead two years later or two months, and they never got, I was going to travel when I retire, I was going to do this when I retire. So part of, of what I really want to emphasize to you today is that if there are things you want to do in retirement, you need to also start doing them now. And... I know, it's like time, I don't have time, I don't have money, I've got responsibilities. You, we're going to have to help you find a way to do that. Um, so, um, and, and this is all included in some of the emotional issues that we get uh, in retirement. Um, the fear of change. How many of you like change? <sighs> you weirdos. <laughs> change is really scary. I... I, I uh, um, you know, last year, if you all were here, I was talking about um, I had given in, I turned in my parking pass and got the bike thing, and I was riding my bike. Um, and it's a bright green bike I call Lamborghini. And Lamborghini and I pedal along, you know, and we're going. But I was really scared, and I had that bike for probably three weeks before I rode it because I was sure people were going to talk about my weight on the bike or I couldn't get up the hill or, um, you know, the car, I'd get hit by a car 
or something like that. So all of a sudden I went from just getting in my car and driving to work to, oh gosh, you know, what's this like? So I, I started, if any of you are on Instagram, uh, my, my thing is see Annie ride and it talks about the change that when that happened to me because I have these uh, I call them the mofos and they sit up here in my head and it's like fear and it's it's um, oh see I haven't talked to them in a while fear and, and other things that tell me you can't do this you know or you're not able or it's gonna be really weird or, or things like that so my object my what I want to do when I'm riding Lamborghini is to shut the mofos up and that's what we have to kind of do is talk to some of our fears when it comes to trying new things. Um, and that's part of change. You know, we also wonder, is the party over? <laughs> I don't know how many of you are partying all the time, but that doesn't necessarily mean drinking and, and you know, dancing, although whatever you can if you want. Um, but are you going to lose your ability to have fun, to be active? Um, relationships change, that's a big one. When I talk to people that they come in, you know, some people are like, um, gosh, I'm going to be home all day with my spouse. You know, and, and you can see their whole body goes, oh. And other people are like, oh, I can't wait. My spouse and I are going to be together the whole day. And I love it when I see them both and they're different. <laughs> um, so we're going to talk a little bit about that. Uh, fear of, of mental decline. Are you going to be mentally active? My granny lived to be 100 years old and a half exactly, and she was sharp till the day she died. I mean, she could tell you the day, she could tell you what was going on, but she couldn't see. She got macular degeneration, um, and that made her mad, and she took it out on all of us. No, <laughs> um, but she was sharp. She was still sharp, but that she couldn't see was hard on her because she still wanted to go to movies. She still wanted to drive. She still wanted to take care of herself. And again, this is kind of that difference in um, when one thing is working and one thing is not. One thing is difficult. Fear of loneliness is a big one, so we're going to talk a lot about that, and fear of physical illness. Can I keep up? Can I do the things I wanted to do that somebody in the back mentioned? So um, this, uh, you know, we uh, Dr. Henderson talked about this. Um, this is this party over is it's really saying, you know, what is your identity outside of work? Uh, you know, when we meet people, what's the first thing we ask them usually? What do you do? Where do you work? You know, and so, or if you're my mom, she says, what book are you reading? People are like, what? <laughs> uh, she was an English teacher, so that makes sense. Um, so what you need to start thinking about now is what do you want your role to be? How are you going to be someone besides a worker? Besides someone who shows up at work, and even at work you might have a role. You might be the cake baker. You know, one lady said, you know, I don't want to retire. I have always baked the cake for my department. You know, I've always done the birthday cakes. And she took a lot of pride in that. You know, that was one of her roles. And I'm sure her department was like, oh, man, don't retire, because I think her cakes were pretty good. So um, that sense of purpose of what are you going to do, who are you, uh, is, is going to come into play. Um, and... I don't know how many of you could get through Victor Frankl's Man's Search for Meaning. It's kind of deep. Um, but he talked about that uh, our human nature, what motivates us is finding a life purpose. And that becomes different once we retire. Uh, when we go to work, we know this is kind of our purpose. And I was looking up life purpose. I, I thought, what are, what are, you know, because goodness forbid I should think of my own. I want to use somebody else's. Um, but I was looking up and like Nelson Mandela, support what respects and enhances freedom. That was his, his, his statement of purpose, his sense of purpose. Now, I'm not suggesting you spend 27 years in jail, you know, um, trying to have your sense of purpose. But fulfillment is going to be achieved through finding some pursuit and a meaning. What do you want to do? Um, you know, and that what happens is, is that if we have that sense of purpose, we are more able to handle the rough times because we know why we're doing something. We know the meaning of what we want to do. Uh, so if we lose our spouse, our spouse dies, or um, you know, we can't afford something, we still have a purpose. Um, what will I be? So um, also if we have a sense of purpose, it influences our behavior and our choices. 
uh, because if it doesn't match up, hopefully you're not going to be choosing to do those things. Um, so what I'd like you uh, to do is, um, how many of you all have a bucket list? Okay, how many of you are crossing things off that bucket list? Excellent, all right. How many of you, does that involve travel? Okay, those of you who travel, I think you should bring a therapist with you, especially if it's to the beach or the mountains. I'm just gonna throw that in there, okay? So, at your table for just about five minutes, I'd like you to talk about your top things besides money, ability, uh, disability, health, what are two or three things that scare you about retirement? Talk amongst yourself. Now I'm gonna spend a ton of time on this. Okay, you guys. Boy, you guys must have a lot of fears. You're just a talking away. Talk, 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 talk. All right, so anything come up that, that surprised you that you'd never thought of that now you've got a new fear? <laughs> Me falling off the edge here. What were some of the things that came? Yes. Monotony. Whew. Over it. Looks like Groundhog Day. Yes. I hate that movie. Yeah, that's what we do now. <laughs> Be a therapist. It won't happen that way. <laughs> what else besides monotony? That's a good one. I mean a bad one, but a good answer. How can you fear what you don't know? True, because it's, it's really you don't know what's coming. Excellent, okay. So would you say you're fearless? <laughs> See, I, I can tell you a thousand ways to fear what you don't know. <laughs> the mofos will be up here all day. What else? And I hope mofos don't offend anybody. I'm sorry, I'll quit saying it. What else? That's okay. Fear of not getting to do what you plan to do. Right. Because you get sick, you die, uh, it stops happening, whatever. Okay. Somebody learned kindergarten rules and raised their hand. Linda. Yes. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's just the old lady over there. She said ageism. Nobody takes your ideas seriously. Well, let's just listen to that old lady and then we can get on with it. You know, that kind of thing. That is a fear. And that, that does happen where you just kind of get pushed aside. You know, and that comes back to some of that relevance. Um, and where you might still feel very relevant, you might still feel like you have a lot to share, but does everybody around you, are they going to listen? Are they going to respect that? You know, and I hope they do because you, you bring a lot of experience. Um, and just another perky side note. Do you know what uh, the biggest or what group has the highest incidence of suicide right now? Senior men. Why? Loss of identity. And pretty soon women will be right up there with them. You know, because uh, we work too, but... It, historically, men put a lot more stock in their identity as workers. And when they no longer work, they feel like they're a burden, they don't have a role. So that is the highest growing rate of suicide attempts and actual deaths. See, I told you that was uplifting, wasn't it? Um, and, and I know I didn't um, make copies, but we will make this available on the Work Life website. I don't know if they know that yet, but we will. Um, but 10 important questions to ask. Um, some of them just to kind of get you thinking about what you'd like to do. Um, my favorite ways to spend time include. My least favorite ways to spend time include. My favorite people to spend time with. Do you ever have those people that just don't give you energy? Do you want to spend time with them? You know, because in retirement, you kind of get to pick and choose if you want to or not. Um, if I could turn my hobby into a business, what would it be? Uh, if I could do something just for fun, I would. If I could work anywhere. My boss, Azetta, is sitting back there, and I've tried to convince her that um, I would better serve people in the Bahamas. Um, <laughs> she's not buying it. So, 
everybody just flutter emails. <laughs> um, something that sounds like fun, but isn't fun to me. Like, okay, I'll confess, I don't like yoga. I don't. Um, you know, it's big right now, yoga with goats, yoga with wine, yoga, yoga, yoga. It's not fun to me. I tried to like it. So uh, I've always wanted to. How many of us have a long list of that? I've always wanted to do ABC, but we don't do it for whatever reason. Um, I sometimes regret that I never. And that's a big one, regret. Um, if I could give one thing to the world, it would be. That's a little lofty, but I keep thinking this is the microphone. And I was worried if you guys were going to be awake. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> All right. Um, so, so with some of those fears, my suggestion to you is start thinking of a plan. How are you going to start addressing it? If you want to travel but you don't have a bunch of money, then where are some weekend things you could do? What are some overnight trips? What are some day trips you could do? Um, if you think, well, I don't want to travel because I'm single. What are some groups you could join? What, what, um, are there clubs that go traveling? Are there clubs that do the things you want to do? Um, so uh, those are the things you want to start thinking about now rather than when you're older or when you're retiring. Um, so here's the relationship dynamics. Uh, how many of you, maybe your spouse or your partner gets home before you do and uh, they cook and you come home and you do the dish? You, you kind of have a routine about how things go. Pretty soon you're both going to be home. Yeah? Okay. You've got a routine? Okay. I appreciate that. You were participating. Don't look down. Let's give her a hand, you guys. She participated. <laughs> Excellent. Whoa, this is red. Should it be red? Does that mean we're all lit? Up. <laughs> all right. So here's the thing. <laughs> I saw a lady, and she said she's getting ready to retire. And I said, well, what are your, have you and your husband talked about as far as chores and responsibilities? She said, oh, I didn't think about that. <laughs> it is important to start talking now. What's it going to be like? Who's going to have what chores? How often are you going to do it? Are we going to do activities together? Are we going to do them alone? Are we going to have a little mix? You know, as much as you love your spouse or your partner, you might not want to spend all the time with them. You might, and that's okay too, but you all need to, uh-oh, do we have a married couple that's talking divorce now? <laughs> oh, <laughs> okay. Um, define your limits and boundaries about free time. And this is especially true, um, I can't tell you how many times I have had women come in and say, my kid thinks I'm going to be the new daycare. And they're like, I've got news for them. <laughs> you know, that's not going to happen. And so I think of my sister, Lori. She loves family. And she retired, and then she, like some people, goes back to work, and she works part-time. She loves her grandkids. She loves to spend time with them. So she agreed to watch the youngest two one day a week. That's all she's doing. She'll have them visit. She'll, she'll play with them. She'll do things with them and their mom. But one day a week, that's her limit. You know, other people might say, you know, I've got another lady that's retired, and she's agreed to three days a week, and she loves every bit of it. But if you don't want to, you need to make that clear so that they don't start telling their friends, oh, my mom's retiring, and she's going to babysit. Sure, bring your kids, too. She'll watch them. <laughs> you need to start talking about it now, okay? What do you want to do? What do you not want to do? Um, you know, and that's the same thing for joining groups. I had a lady that loved flowers. She loved gardening. And her church had a little gardening group, and they planted around the church and everything. And she told them she was retiring, and she said they started whispering, and I knew. I knew they were planning on me leading that, that team. And she said, she said, I, I broke it down right there. She said, no, I don't. I'm not going to. Because she didn't want to be responsible. She wanted to do it occasionally. She wanted to show up when she wanted to show up. She didn't want that responsibility. Well, they kept, they kept pecking, but she held her ground because she said it early. She didn't say, oh, I'll think about it. She didn't say, well, maybe, let me see. She said, no, I don't want to. I was pretty proud of that. <laughs> um, here's that fear of mental decline. Um, 
you know, I think Dr. Henderson really hit some good things about this, um, about exercising, take a class. Um, I really wanted to focus, though, on, on volunteering. How many of you volunteer? Excellent. Why do you guys volunteer? It is fun, isn't it? What do you do? Wait, who's talking? Oh, okay. I was looking at you. I was like, wow, she talks without her mouth moving. <laughs> Ventriloquism! Woo! <laughs> That's right. <laughs> you work with the youth at church? Excellent. Who else? Yeah. All right. See, he's got a mustache. That's a fireman right there. Anybody else? Teaching classes. Yes. Excellent. What kind of class? Bible classes. All right. So here are some great things about volunteering. And I do. I, I push volunteering because most of the time we get just as much as we give. And volunteering is a way to stay engaged. Whether And the thing about volunteering is you can do it for yourself. You can do it for a group. You can do it for whatever interests you. You know, some people say, you know, I just want to go in and I'll help them file. Great. Some people want to get in there and, and really work with people. So it's a way to stay engaged. It's a, remain, a way to remain relevant. Um, it puts off loneliness because you're going to see people, you know. Uh, and again, you can say, I'm going to be here every Tuesday from this time. Or you can say, I'll call you each week and let you know. You find the group that's willing to work with you, and that's the group you want to volunteer with, or the individual. Um, you know, if you're working with kids, you're helping the future generations. Um, and there are a lot of people that, uh, you know, anymore, a lot of times families live all over the place. I've got siblings in California. My dad and my stepmom are in Arizona. My mom's in Tennessee. I'm here in Kentucky. We're a tight-knit bunch. <laughs> um, so people are spread out. So sometimes kids don't have grandparents. Sometimes grandparents' kids don't live close. So sometimes that's a good mix. Some grandparents are like, I don't like kids. That's fine, too. <laughs> um, but it gives yourself a purpose and a meaning. It gives yourself purpose and meaning. It helps you stay visible. Uh, and by that, I mean people know that you're still up and you're around and they're looking for you. Um, and again, we go back to it gives you a good sense of purpose of things to do. Um, fear of loneliness. This is a big one, I think. Um, and somebody asked, while well, Dr. Henderson was talking, about how do you make friends at our age? And this is an ongoing question we get in, in therapy. Uh, we have people from all over the world here, and they often don't know how to make friends. And I'll tell you, Lexington is kind of a tough place. A lot of people have been born and raised here. They have family. They might have enough friends. You know, um, if you don't have kids, you're not going to meet other parents. Uh, or, or on sports teams or things. So um, we'll talk about a little, that a little bit more. But here's the thing. If you are lonely now, you're probably going to be lonely when you retire. Sorry to break that to you. So this is a big one about what are you going to do about it now. And this is one that um, for a lot of people, it might be about anxiety. I don't like meeting new people. I don't know how to meet new people. You know, um, I'm scared to do something by myself. You know, things like that. So, you know, what I tell people is ask a coworker to go somewhere with you. Um, you know, go a couple times and just stand on the edge. Go a couple times and stay for a few minutes and leave. It's a gradual thing. But if you want to learn more, if, if that's something that, that you deal with, some of that anxiousness about trying new things, make an appointment with Rhonda and I. We will talk to you about how to do that. Um, we also, on the 23rd, are doing speed friending. Have you heard of speed dating? Well, this is speed friending. We don't want hookups. It's just to come and make some friends. And we hope that people will uh, come and, uh-oh. Talking about hookups. We hope that people will come and maybe find some people that they uh, like to talk to. We've got a way of doing it. Uh, so check it out, Speed Friending on the 23rd. you got to sign up. Uh, and it was very successful last time. Very successful. Um, but here's the thing. Like, after work, I'm generally pretty tired. I've been talking and listening all day. 
and I really don't always want to, to talk to other people. But I also found that after a while, people stopped inviting me. And I took it personally for a minute. You know, the mofos up there, they got to talking. And, but then I realized, you know, if you keep saying no, people eventually are going to say, eh, she, she, she always says no. So occasionally I have to say yes, whether I am tired or not, whether I'm not feeling on the top of my game, I have to say yes because I want to stay involved. I want to have people in my life. And then also the other important part of that is that you sometimes reciprocate it, that you invite people places um, and, and ask them to do things. Um, the other thing I've done, uh, because I'm single, call me, no, um, <laughs> is that you can start joining professional groups. Uh, I joined, I got on the board of the Kentucky Society for Clinical Social Workers. And I tell you, that really impressed my aunt and uncle, and I was just like, they had to beg me. <laughs> but that's okay because I have started meeting other people. And so I'm expanding my friend group. And they do not only continuing education, but they do fun things. So can you join a professional group? My dad was a rotary guy, and, and he loved it. Um, traveling with a group, uh, my granny and um, my granddaddy's sister were best friends. And they loved to go, but they had husbands who did not. My granddaddy was kind of, you know, I just want to stay here, um, watch the birds play solitaire, drink whiskey. And Granny liked to go. And they found a group that also liked to drink margaritas. And this was appealing to Granny and Mary. So they traveled all over with this group. And they weren't getting, going out and getting drunk or anything, but they enjoyed a cocktail. And, that, and they went all places. They went, but they liked the day trips or the overnight. They didn't want to go away for a long time. Um, and if you look up travel groups, senior travel groups, whatever, the internet's a great thing as far as finding some of these. Um, I also, oh, and, and also the high energy versus low energy. If you are someone who is, has high energy and high mobility, you like to move, then probably you're going to want to find like a group that goes to biking or a running club or, or something like that. If you're on the low energy, low mobility, you might want to find a, a card club or a comic book or a board game. So think about how much energy do you have. Um, and then the taking classes. There are lots of learning opportunities, and I'm glad that Ollie is back there. Wave, Ollie. Woo! All right. Lifelong learning. They have some great classes, uh, and, and it's a great way to get involved. Um, my brother is a social worker, too, in California, and he works for the Episcopalian Diocese, something, something, something. Uh, but they have this um, thing called Senior Center Without Walls. Anybody in the United States can join. And they have groups for uh, foreign language. They have groups for history, for books, for uh, just talking, for whatever. And, and it's usually a class. It's just like classes are offered for so long. You can join, and you can join by, on the phone, by the computer, or in person. Obviously, it's in California, so you've got to want to travel if you want to be there in person. But it's a great way, and, and there's a lot of rules. It's safe, and it's made so that everybody's heard. And, and I think, it, I mean, he said it's one of their most popular things they do. Uh, there's also the Lexington Senior Center. You just have to be 60 and older. And I copied some of the classes they have. You guys, listen to this. Oh, the glasses. Ugh. You can go and do Beat Drum Boogie. Choga. What's choga? Chair yoga. There, see? It's even yoga with chairs. Um, brains, balance, and beyond. Learn to balance. Because, you know, as we get older, falls are, can happen, so there's something that. Golden arches. How many of you think you go to McDonald's for that? Nope. It's an outdoor walking group. Uh, pickleball. They play that over at um, the Seton Center sometimes. It's, it's like this little, well, you know, you have to look it up, pickleball. Um, they have a history class. They have Friday friends that just gets together and talk. They have book clubs. Um, I mean, there's all sorts of things to do. You just have to look. You have to start investigating. Um, and if you don't see something, start something. You know, get, get together with your friends. Ask them, you know, is anybody interested in this? Or put it on your Facebook page or or 
advertise it, but you can start your own groups. There's also, how many of you have heard of meetup.com Lexington? They've got, all, yeah, they've got all sorts of, of different groups from board games to philosophy discussion to walking groups. The thing I like about meetup.com is most of the groups meet outside. So it's safe to go that first time. It's not like somebody's like, come to my house. And you're like, wait a minute, <laughs> not sure I want to do that. Um, so let's see. Then there's the fear, again, we're back to the physical illness. And I, I think Dr. Henderson did a, a great job on, on this about, you know, you want to find some classes. And again, if you're starting now, uh, health and wellness has great programs. I can't emphasize that enough. And one of them is Move Well. And they will be happy. You can make an appointment. They will give you an exercise routine. If you say, I want to stay home and exercise, they will tell you how to do that. If you say you want to join the gym, they will tell you how to, what different exercises to do. If you say, I want to work on flexibility, they will cater it to you. So it's a great resource. You don't have to go, you know, training for Ironman. Just tell them what you need, and they can start helping you with some of that. Same thing with nutrition. We have two nutritionists in wellness um, in the Eat Well program. Uh, Karen McNeese and Vanessa Oliver, uh, they are very helpful. They can talk to you about food for your brain. Uh, Karen does a great presentation about food for your brain and, and keeping it young and healthy. So um, UK has a lot of good resources that you can start using. Don't just stick to UK, though. You can go into the, your communities as well. Um, mental health, obviously. Uh, I promote that. I love mental health. I really wish everybody had to do mental health. Uh, just come and talk to someone. Um, we aren't listened to enough. And sometimes, I mean, I have some people that will come in, and this is what I do. Uh-huh, uh-huh, oh, really, uh-huh. And they're like, man, you're a genius. Those are the best days. <laughs> Those are the best days. Um, you know, so it, it, it doesn't matter. You know, if you need some help, get some help. And then rest. Uh, that's a big one. I have found that rest comes when we are active, when our minds are active, when our bodies are active. The days I ride Lamborghini around and around, I sleep like a rock. You know, um, exercise is great. And I know some of you exercise every day or, or lots of days. <sighs> Again, Find the exercise that works for you. If you like to swim, go swimming. If you like playing pickleball, join pickleball. Uh, you know, it, it, it doesn't matter. Just find something that you like. Um, so remember, two to five years before you retire, you need to start thinking about this. Heck, start thinking about it now. It really doesn't matter when, uh, when you're going to retire. Start making some plans now. And if you don't know where to start, if you don't know what to do, come talk to, to Rhonda or myself, and we are happy to help you. Um, it's available to all employees. Uh, we even see STEPS people, uh, retirees. Um, you can schedule online by going to that uh, RED website, or you can call um, uh, Patty, or the lady, we call her part-time Patty because she works on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Thursdays. If you call, she'll help you get scheduled. Uh, appointments are an hour, and like I said, they're confidential. Um, and we're happy to help uh, you figure that out. So any questions or comments about any of this? I know we kind of have had an afternoon of, of the emotional part of retiring. Happy to answer any questions. Listen to your comments, your snarky remarks. Yes, all right. <laughs> well, if anybody is interested in cleaning houses, come to Ann Bassoni's house. Um, United Way uh, has a whole list of, of volunteer opportunities. Uh, and, and if you just type in volunteer opportunities Lexington, it will, or you know, wherever, whatever's close to you, uh, there should be a list, but United Way definitely has a list. Schools always are pretty much looking for people to come read um, to kids to um, help out with different things. Uh, you do have to pack a, pass a background check, 
So think about that before you go down there. Um, but, um, you know, uh, but the other part of that is if there is an area you're interested in, call. Like if you're interested in art, is, is one of the art museums or one of the frame shops or something like that, is that somewhere you can always call and say, do you need a volunteer? And if somebody says no, my thing is always say, well, do you have any recommendations? Good question. Anything else? Yes. I think we have somebody that's part of 4-H in the room. 4-H is always looking for volunteers, she said. That's excellent. Anything else? Oh, yes. The hospital also has volunteer. The hospital also has volunteer services. Excellent. How do they, how do they, uh, like for, for hospital, do you just type in UK hospital volunteer or call the, the, volu the volunteer? Okay. Patient experience. And for 4-H, do they call it by county? Ah. County Extension Office, all right. Any other questions, comments? Well, I, I appreciate your time, and if you do have any questions, just uh, come find me, and uh, I hope you get to retire soon, especially if you have a job I want. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Thank you, everybody.